Let me paint a picture for you. The date is September of 2020. I'm a free agent. I sit down with Hunter Campbell. I sit in his office. I look at him and I say, Hunter, I want to be a good thing for your organization. I want to fight the top guys right away. Either I am who I say I am or I'm not. Throw me into the deep water. Throw me into the shark infested waters of the UFC and let's see how I do. Check out this graphic. I remember that day like it was yesterday when I sat in Hunter Campbell's office and I said, throw me into the shark infested waters of the UFC. Either I am who I say I am or I'm not. At the time that I signed with the UFC, Khabib Nurmagomedov, champion. Justin Gaethje, number one, fought him. Dustin Poirier, number two, fought him. Charles Oliveira, number three, fought him. Conor McGregor, had a fight booked, he pulled out. Number five, Tony Ferguson, fought him. Number six, Dan Hooker, fought him. That is why I'm fighting Charles Oliveira. See, I think you guys have forgotten over the last year or so who Michael Chandler is. From October of 2020, I signed with the organization in September. From October of 2020 to November of 2022, in a 25-month span, I did six training camps, one backup fight for the world title fight, five fights in 25 months, four fight of the night or performance of the night bonuses, two fight of the year candidates, one fight of the year against Justin Gaethje, one KO of the year against Tony Ferguson, one debut of the year against Dan Hooker. Debut of the year, fight of the year, knockout of the year in 25 months. That is why I'm taking the Charles Oliveira fight. Why? Because I took a quick little detour to chase this thing the opportunity of the Ultimate Fighter, six weeks filming the Ultimate Fighter, then 12 hours, 12 weeks on ESPN on the Ultimate Fighter 31. Then we did a reaction show with huge guests like Nate Bargatze and Jelly Roll and Brantley Gilbert and Russell Dickerson and all these different guys. I got more promo, more eyeballs, more of everything in the last year and a half than I would have gotten with three fights. And now I get the opportunity to take a title run. I beat Charles Oliveira. I become the number one contender. I beat Charles Oliveira. I can choose to go fight Islam or Armin. I believe it's going to be Islam. Or if Connor can finally get his house in order and put together a training camp and show up to a fight, maybe I go fight Connor and we finish the Ultimate Fighter 31. This is the ultimate bet on yourself. See, I think you guys have forgotten who I am. I was the guy who bet on myself and walked onto the University of Missouri, a Division I college, and ended up becoming a four time national qualifier, an All American, and a three year team captain. I was the guy who bet on myself when I had the virtual certainty of Bellator and I could have stayed there, made a ton of money and had massive security. And I bet it all on myself and went to the UFC and now I've had this run. And now every fighter on the roster, no matter what they say, and all you silly little naysayers out there talking about me waiting for Connor and I should pivot and I should do all, all these other things. Every fighter on the roster with their name having been connected to a contract a bout agreement with Conor McGregor at a certain date, at a certain weight, at a certain location. I still have that, even though the fight is still to be determined, but I am pivoting. Why? Because I'm a fighter through and through, and I think you guys have forgotten that. Nobody would have had the balls to make this decision and bet on the self, themselves like this. And for me, this is personal. This is a revenge fight. Charles Oliveira stole my dream of becoming UFC champion my number one goal, becoming the number one guy in the entire world back in Houston, Texas, my second fight in the UFC. So now, talk to Henry Hoofter this morning. We're putting together a game plan to go beat him in the rematch. This is always the way it was supposed to be. You never know how your story is going to be written. Yeah, I have my doubts. Yeah, I have my hard days. But since day one, when I fought Dustin Poirier back at MSG in November of 2022, then we started the next journey. Then I got the phone call for the, for the Ultimate Fighter. And then everything has played out how it has played out. Since day one, I have never stopped working. I have never stopped the faith that all of this is going to work out. And I have the confident expectancy that everything is going to work out. And I know Connor is already out there talking. Obviously, he has to talk and he has to throw shade at me and tell me I'm an idiot for squandering the bag. And this is the biggest fight. And now he's just upset. He's got his feelings hurt because he realizes what I've realized the entire time, but haven't been public about it. I don't need Conor McGregor to, f to cement my legacy in this sport. I'm here to be champion. I'm here to be number one. That's why I'm, why I'm about to make this title run. I dispatch of Charles Oliveira, November 16th at Madison Square Garden, which will be my third fight of the night in mass in, at Madison Square Garden since I've been in the UFC. I'm going to go get my hand raised and then I go win the title or I finally get the opportunity to snatch Conor McGregor's soul out of his body.
So I thought I just needed to make take a moment to remind you guys who Michael Chandler is. For the people who have said I've lost steam, I have never once slowed down, even though I have not been crazy public about it and been all over the place. I've been quietly working and quietly biding my time and quietly building a foundation for this crazy comeback that we're about to do. To become the number one contender, to go win the belt, to go smash Connor, or maybe even fight Max Holloway for the BMF, which was offered to Max at the Sphere, and Max turned it down, which I respect that. Max is going to beat Ilya Teporia and become the, the featherweight champion. So, exciting times. This is where my mindset is at. I made this decision weeks ago, um, and I've known that I was going to pivot, but you guys know how I operate. I move in silence and I keep on working because I don't need the attention, the clout, the, the eyeballs to make me feel like a significant human being. Quietly work, continuing to walk on. So here we go, November 16th is right around the corner. Madison Square Garden, I dispatch of Charles Oliveira. I become the number one contender. I become your lightweight champion in 2025. God bless. I'll see you at the top.